Welcome to Peak Life. I'm Amanda Jackson, Director of the Chesapeake Public Library System, and with me today is Joseph Daniels. Joseph, Hi. thanks for being here. That's my pleasure. So today we're going to talk about the Gallery at Coyle. First of all, what is that? So the Gallery at Coyle is um, my favorite new thing we're doing here at Chesapeake Public Library, um, but it was part of when we decided to renovate and innovate the Clarence Cuffey uh, Library over on Border Road into the Cuffey Outreach and Innovation Library. One of the things that we put into that plan was an actual exhibition space. Because like we say in our like uh, mission for the gallery, that we really want to make a space for everybody in Chesapeake to have a voice and everybody in Hampton Roads. Um, so when we redid it, we turned the entire second floor, all of the wall space into an actual gallery. Um, and we'll have changing exhibitions there about every six to eight weeks throughout the year. And why is that important? You know, some people would say, wow, that's really outside the box of what libraries do. Why, why have a gallery space? Why do art? Um, well, that's, that's kind of the whole point. It is outside of what libraries normally do, and that's what we really wanted to make Cuffy into, was a non-traditional library, a library of the future. Um, the other thing is the libraries, since really actually their inception, have always displayed art for the public, um, because it's a public space and it's a great place for people who otherwise might not know the whole apparatus of getting into the art world or exhibiting can reach out to us and have a place to display their art to the public, you know, maybe to make a sale, but to kind of get their name out there so that, you know, galleries and stuff can take an interest in them as well. Um, and we believe it's part of our job as a library to allow people access to culture. Um, and there's no culture that's really more accessible than the art that's being produced by the people you spend your life with every day. And some, for some people, you know, going to a museum, that feels like, wow, really intimidating. Yes, and I have worked in museums. Um, it's what they call the white wall syndrome, which is museums hang something on their white wall and they say, this is good. And you're like, I don't even know how to respond to that because I don't have a background in this. And so I guess I have to like it. Um, within a library, which are already community comfortable spaces, when you go in there, you feel like you have ownership over it because you do. You're a patron. You're a stakeholder in the municipality. So that is your space. Um, and these also aren't these huge names from history, like these great men who were told to like because that's part of the canon. Instead, it's people that look like you and that have the same shared experiences as you giving their perspective on the world. And to me, that's much more relatable um, a lot of times in like old masters and old museums. And we've kind of already done that. As you mentioned, sometimes you can look at things and you think, is art just, you know, a bowl of cherries on a table? And eh, I don't really get that. Art is so many different things. Yeah, it, it, it's amazingly dynamic. Um, our first show, um, I studied what we consider like high art in school, which is very like uh, loaded term, um, but you know, oil paintings. Our first artist is actually Willie Cordy. His show is up um, right now uh, in July, and he is a local graphic artist um, and a graphic designer, you know, for people like Bobby Brown, TLC. Our next artist is both a painter and she does spoken word. Her name's Poetry Jackson. She is phenomenal. Um, her show opens on August 1st and will run through September 18th, um, and we're really excited to have her. It's called who are you? And I know it's a cheap pun, but I like it. Um, the Roy G. Biv series of Poetry Jackson. For those people who aren't familiar, Roy G. Biv, the light, you know, the colors of the spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Um, and she's gone through and she's taken um, what is, you know, traditional Indian belief about the chakras and color relations and actually done portraits in three separate series. We're going to have all three, including like the latest one, which is premiering there. Um, the first one's Portraits of Young Black Children. She herself is an artist of color. She's black. Um, the next series is uh, Indian women in um, hijab or uh, headscarf um, and also veiled. Um, and so you're seeing their eyes, so it's a really kind of intense moment. And then the next series, Poetry had um, done a show, and she was selling prints afterwards, and a young white girl came up to her and wanted to buy one, and she didn't have any in there that looked like her. And she could see her dad was kind of scrambling, so Poetry did this third series, which is much more inclusive, and we really love that because that's what we're trying to do at the gallery. We really want to make a space for people who normally don't have a voice, people who come from non-traditional backgrounds, um, non-traditional scholarship and how they learn to create art, to be able to come in as an outsider and get an insider space and like scale for them to actually present their work to the public. 
And this isn't just going to be about enjoying the art, just coming in and seeing it. She's actually doing a lot of uh, really awesome things with us too. Yeah, we're, every single exhibition that we do at the Gallery at Coil is gonna have um, associated programming with it. So Poetry is doing on August 29th, I believe, one called Palettes and Poetry, uh, Family Paint Day. You have to register for it. You can go to our calendar of events at chesapeakelibrary.org. Um, but it's a traditional kind of like paint night, except instead of getting a prompt that's a picture, she's actually going to have a poem that she wrote that has visual imagery in it that's going to be the prompt for the families to be able to put together. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then her closing event, like I said, she's a spoken word artist as well, is going to be called Brushstrokes and Beats of Open Mic Night. It's going to be on September 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and literally people can come in and share their own, if, they want to, if they're prose writers, if you're poetry writers, share that. But give everybody a platform to kind of partake in that creative spirit, you know. That is really exciting. A lot of different ways to make, like you said in the beginning, art accessible. That exactly. art is not one thing that you can. And so this is what we can expect from the gallery going forward, correct? Yeah, yeah. every six to eight weeks we will have a new artist. We will always have programming to try to include the public um, and be able for them to be able to interact with the artist, to learn from them, um, and maybe to get them interested enough that they submit an application to exhibit themselves. And you can do that online um, through our services uh, heading on our main page. Um, and you'll see an art application there. And definitely uh, submit and we'll look at your interest and we'll see if we can't give you a platform as well. And just a little teaser, what can we expect after Poetry Jackson? After Poetry Jackson, we have Camilla Ruiz, who is another uh, graphic artist. He does graphic novels. Um, he teaches over at the Art Institute in Virginia Beach. And he will be premiering on the 20th of September, um, and he'll be going through the end of October. Um, he's an artist of color. He's Latino, so um, we'll be doing him for Latinx Heritage Month. That's fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much for being with us Thanks today, Joseph. Me. This is a great opportunity to experience art with your family in all its diff different forms and facets and to do it at a really reasonable cost because right. we always <laughs> cost zero dollars at the library. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you at the library. Thank you.